DNA sequencing techniques are methods simply used to elucidate the sequence of a DNA fragment. Sequencing simply means mapping the DNA in terms of its nucleotide sequences. Sequencing became possible when scientists developed methods for generating DNA fragments with a particular nucleotide terminus. Two methods of sequencing are typically used. One is a chemical method and the other one is an enzymatic method. These chemical and enzymatic methods are used with or without modifications of the original protocols in sequencing machines. Both the methods involve fragmenting the DNA into four helicots with fragments in each helicot ending at one end with one of the four nucleotides and the other end of the fragments are being identical. The identical end are usually radio labeled. The fragments in each helicot are separated on specialized polyacrylamide gels called sequencing gels. These sequencing gels are 8 percentage polyacrylamide gels containing 8 molar urea. These sequencing gels are typically 400 millimeter in length. After the separation of DNA fragments, the four gels are aligned side by side and the order of the fragment from the smallest that is the fragments that are at the bottom of the gel to the largest that is next to the intact whole length of the DNA fragment is read off in terms of nucleotide that are found at the end of the fragment. Routinely all the DNA fragments in a reaction mixture are not placed in wells of the gel in one go. Carefully aliquots are removed at intervals from the start of the reaction and is placed in the well. The earliest aliquots at the bottom of the gel and the largest aliquots at the top. Within each aliquot the sequence is read from the bottom upwards. This procedure is preferred as short tracks are not distorted on the gel whereas there is considerable distortion at the bottom of longer tracks. The fragments obtained by the chemical method which is in fact developed by Maxim and Gilbert terminate in a particular base at the cut end. Similarly those generated by the enzymatic method or the sanger colson method also end in a specific base in each reaction set. Before carrying out the reactions, the fragments are radioactively labeled at the 5 dash end. sanger colson method creates a set of nested fragments beginning from a defined region which is in fact the primer. Both methods use same reaction mixers and in Maxim and Gilbert method, they cleave fragments in one mixture after the same nucleotide. In Sanger's method, each reaction mixture contains dideoxynucleotide of one of the four kinds. Incorporation of DDNTP in place of a DNTP stops DNA strand synthesis. Any reaction mixture therefore contains samples of new strands that have stopped at least of the sites occupied by its complementary nucleotide in the template strand. The fragments from each mixture are fractionated on specialized vertical gels called sequencing gels that can separate DNA strands differing in length by even a single nucleotide. The sequence is read off from the four gels which are aligned next to each other. Subsequently, the gels are southern blotted and autoradiographed. The sequence is read from the autoradiogram. The process of reading the bands has been streamlined and made practically error proof by adding electronic devices to scan the intensity of each band in the gel. The original chemical method devised by Maxim and Gilbert and the enzymatic method devised by Sanger and Colson have been replaced by modifications that are more rapid in execution and less demanding in operations. Today, the chemical method has also been automated by the use of a sequencer instrument. The enzymatic method depends on the availability of a pure strand of DNA 
that acts as a template. The initial time-consuming methods of isolating pure collections of DNA are today replaced with messings and woo modifications. In the messings and woo modifications, the replicative form, that is the RF vector from the single stranded DNA phage M13 is exploited for carrying the inserted fragment that is to be sequenced. In Wu method, a linear DNA is degraded from the 3' end to the 5' end with an exonuclease 3 until only a certain region of the double stranded DNA remains. This region is cleaved to yield asymmetric fragments, each of which is used for sequencing. The nested fragments show up on the autoradiogram due to the labels of the DNA fragments. In Maxman Gilbert method, the labels are at one specific end of the fragments. In the Sanger Colson method, the label is distributed within the fragment due to the presence of the label in one or more of the nucleotides used to synthesize the fragment. End labeling of the 5' terminus is achieved by replacing the resident phosphate with a P32 ATP. The 3' end may be labeled by using enzyme, terminal nucleotidal transferase and the 4 P32 labeled ribonucleotides. A subsequent alkali treatment removes all the labeled ribonucleotides except the one at the original 3' end. A 3' resistant may be labeled by using the cleaner fragment and the 4 labeled deoxyribonucleotides to make the end a flushed one. Reliable and rapid sequencing is presently achieved by using either of the two methods. Some modifications of the chemical method are preferred for lengths of DNA that is less than 0.5 kb in size and those are the enzymatic method for DNA longer than 5 kb in size. The enzymatic procedure is found to be more cost effective than the chemical method. Now we are moving on to Maxman Gilbert method in detail. The Maxman Gilbert method involves the production of four sets of DNA fragments in four different vials. Each set will have an identical end which is in fact radio labeled and the other end that ends in a particular nucleotide. These fragments are produced by using chemicals hence called the chemical method. In the Maxim and Gilbert method in one aliquot all the fragments will end in a A or a G. In the other aliquot the DNA fragment will end in G and so on. Some reactions that are employed in the maximum Gilbert method are not absolutely specific which we will discuss as we move on. The fragments are created by chemical reactions that cleave the DNA preferentially after a particular nucleotide that is ATP, GTP or SCTP. The cleavage reaction consists of three steps. The first step is a modification of base next to the base of the interest. That is the one that is to terminate a fragment in one reaction mixture. The third step is the cleavage of the backbone at the site of this gap. DNA fragments that are to be sequenced is usually a restriction fragment, one end of which is labeled at the 5' end or at the 3' end or sometimes at both ends. The labeled DNA is dissociated and the fragments are fractionated on a denaturing gel. The double stranded DNA are dissociated by mild alkali or heat treatment to obtain single stranded DNA. The double stranded DNA is first cleaved into asymmetric size fragments and each of the fragments are sequenced separately. This is done to check the validity of the derived sequence and the sequence obtained from the complementary strands are compared to check the validity. The cleavage reactions are carried out in four reaction mixtures with conditions for cleaving after one particular nucleotide. The reaction conditions that is the temperature, reaction time, and concentration of the reagents are chosen to allow only one base to be modified per DNA strand or a very few in the entire strand. Since 
modification occurs at random in the various likely sites during chemical treatment. The reaction mixture contains the end fragments that possess the labeled end and terminate in one of the required positions. That is, say, if the reaction is set for cleaving the DNA only after a G, the final collection of fragments will have every length of the DNA that ends in G. And uh, the other end will be radio labeled. Now we will discuss in detail the four reactions that cut the DNA at A or a G or specifically at G or specifically at C and at a T or a C. It should be noted that the reaction weakens the N-glycosidic bond between the ribose and the base moieties. In the first vial, to cleave after a G, the DNA is methylated with dimethyl sulfate and treated with alkaline piperidine that removes the modified G. The modified G here is N-methyl deoxyguanidine. Since the second reaction is not so specific, cleavage will take place after A or at a G. For this, the DNA is methylated as done earlier that is by using dimethyl sulfate but treated subsequently with acidic piperidine. The acid used here is formic acid. Now only, only the backbone at the site of the N3 methylated adenine is cleaved. Thus, in one reaction mixture, fragments end in G and in the other reaction mixture, those ending in A will be produced depending on the treatment after methylation. In the third reaction, both T and C are modified by hydrazine treatment and it is removed by piperidine. In the fourth reaction, the hydrazine treatment is carried out in presence of 1 molar sodium chloride followed by piperidine treatment. Only C gets affected and the DNA is cleaved at the site of the gap left by the removal of C. C is cytosine. Sometimes a fifth reaction involving uh, sodium hydroxide treatment followed by piperidine is set up and the data from this merely confirms the position of bases derived from the first four reactions. The fifth reaction cleaves at both A and C but the cleavage will take place more at A than at C under equivalent conditions. It should be noted that there is no reaction that specifically terminates a DNA at T site. The position of T's are determined by comparing the lanes in the gel for fragments cleaved at T or C and only the fragments that are cleaved at C. DNA having concentrations as low as 1 picomole can be sequenced by this chemical method. Although factors such as incubation time, the concentration of the reagents and temperature of the reaction are the parameters that control how many bases are modified by a reaction. But in practice, incubation time is usually used as a controlling variable.